Hello, everyone. It's Tings again from Dongsheng Collective, and this is News on China. Let's get to the top stories we've chosen for you this week. The long-awaited BRICS summit in South Africa just wrapped up, culminating in the announcement that six new countries are joining the bloc: Argentina, Saudi Arabia, Iran, Ethiopia, Egypt, and the United Arab Emirates will become full members as of January 1, 2024. Xi Jinping called the expansion historic and said that it represents a new beginning for BRICS cooperation. He reaffirmed that the admission of new members was in line with the expectations of the international community and the common interests of developing countries. In his speeches, Xi criticized some country for being obsessed with maintaining its hegemony and for turning emerging economies into targets for destruction. He also raised the question, and I quote: "Should we work together to maintain peace and stability, or just sleepwalk into the abyss of a new Cold War?" She advocated that BRICS remains committed and united in order to build a community of shared development and ensure that, in the process of global modernization, that no country is left behind. Brazilian President Lula announced that the bloc has asked the finance ministers and central banks of the member countries to begin studying international payment systems, trade in local currencies, and a possible new reserve currency for the group, which would make it possible to build alternatives to the U.S. dollar. This study is expected to be presented to the BRICS leaders at their next summit in October 2024 in Russia. On his arrival for the most anticipated BRICS summit in its 15-year history, President Xi Jinping was greeted at the airport by the event's host, South African President Cyril Ramaphosa. In a ceremony at the official residence, she was presented with South Africa's highest state honor, the Order of South Africa, and said that the relationship between the two countries had entered a golden age. Both heads of state took the opportunity to hold an official meeting where they signed agreements as part of the Belt and Road Initiative for 2.2 billion dollars, including in infrastructure, tourism, and education. One of the agreements aims at improving the African country's energy sector, which has been going through a serious crisis. She also promised to increase imports of South African products, such as meat, to China. Another interesting agreement was the signing of a space exploration partnership that would include South African participation in future crewed missions to the International Lunar Research Station that China and Russia are jointly building. During the BRICS summit, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi also proposed the creation of a space cooperation between the BRICS countries. Just these days, India celebrated the arrival of its first space probe on the moon, which was the first in history to land on the South Pole. Almost 35 percent of China's population is overweight, and 14 percent are classified as obese, according to a new study. 15.8 million people were classified by the Diabetes, Obesity, and Metabolism Scientific Journal. The study covered 519 health centers located in 243 cities in 31 provinces in China. Being overweight and obese is more prevalent among men, 41.1 percent of whom are overweight, versus 27.7 percent among women. Overweight prevalence peaked for men aged between 50 and 54 years, and women who are between 65 and 69 years old. According to experts, sedentary lifestyle and a decline in physical activity contribute to the high obesity rates in China. In turn, overweight rates are the highest in the north of the country, with Inner Mongolia, Shandong, and Hebei at the top of the list. Among teenagers, the number of overweight people reached 30 million. In response to this trend, the Chinese government has set a target in 2020 to reduce the number of overweight and obese children and adolescents by 70 percent over the next decade. The Qixi Festival, known as China's Valentine's Day, was celebrated just this past week on August 22nd. This tradition, that dates back over 2,000 years, has found a new life in recent years, thanks to the Guochao Movement, which literally means a national trend, where thousands of young people are rediscovering and reinventing traditional Chinese culture. In the case of Qixi Festival, this revival has taken on many forms. For example, many people choose this day to get married, which means civil registries get filled up well in advance. Others participate in activities organized for single people who are hoping to meet their significant other. Some people get personalized gifts made, 
while select institutes and museums have launched their own products. One museum, in particular, developed a mobile game to emulate the ancient customs for this festival. There are also those who chose this night to visit museums that extended visiting hours, such as the Beijing Ancient Architecture Museum, giving a sense of ritual to the celebration. In parks and other public spaces, there were recitals of ancient music, cultural lectures, fan painting, bag embroidery, and the releasing of lotus lanterns, amongst other activities. So there you have it, another week of news on China. If you like the video, please comment, share, and subscribe to the channel, which we always appreciate. And for more content about China, you can follow us on the usual social media platforms at Dongsheng News. And of course, subscribe to our weekly newsletter and more content at dongshengnews.org. I'll see you next week. 再见!